Hello, my name is William James. I'm the host of The Bald Book Geek. All of my info and links are down below. So, I have been on a reread mission of George Orwell's 1984. And it's one of my favorite. I love George Orwell. And it's this is going to be a long-form video. I warn you in advance. Um, I, I adore George Orwell. I think he is a phenomenal writer that tapped into things that we are now currently living through. 1984 kind of predicted the, few, the current world we're in, and it's kind of terrifying when you read it now, where you look at people and you look at what's going on and, and how it's going on and who's going on and what's happening in the world now. And this is what I find interesting as I go through the whole thing is that I see a lot of people and it's interesting when I see this though I never pay for music I have streaming services I just have the free option I use this I have google phones I have my google maps I have trackers I have everything switched on every and I constantly find it interesting that for the sake of free people sell their privacy there is nothing free when you use a service that ha runs ads, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, um, you name it. Every service that runs ads in some form or another, or most internet services, especially on the surface web, you've paid for it with your privacy, with your location, with what you buy on Amazon, with what you buy online, what you Google, what you do, where you look. And you've sacrificed the privacy that you have. So, for the sake of free crap, you have sacrificed your privacy. We live in an age where you're pretty much on camera 24-7. We live in an age where your location is known pretty much 24-7. We live in an age where... You are monitored and watched. The black mirror in your hand, the world that you look at. We live in an age of censorship and control of groupthink. And if you are outside of that bubble of that conversation, if you, if you do not follow the same rhetoric, you are pushed aside. We live in an age where any form of criticism towards a group is deemed racist or homophobic or xenophobic or transphobic when criticism and there is a line i will preface that by saying there is this line between genuine criticism and phobias there is a line and it's very i get it that line can be very blurry and it that line is very personal with people but we live in this weird age of that now 1984 has groups and government offices which censor the media and control what people see. I've said this in another video, if you control the media people consume, you can control the people. And that makes it more interesting in that sense. So, where do we go from here? The, you know, and I, I think I also said this before in another video, that the good guys are never the ones burning books banning stuff they're they're rarely the good guys in any they're never the good guys in any story and i'm gonna say this and it's something i rarely talk about on my channel but i will say that i regard every politician no matter what side they're on as uh, yeah very much centrist but uh passing that it's you end up with this weird world that we're currently living in with a global pandemic and just this sort of age of cultural destruction that we live in and i never thought i would live long enough to see a group of people calling for segregation again didn't we try that in the past that failed we live in an age where marxism and communism are commonplaces and neither of those things are good um <laughs> They are not good. They're, the only good communist is a dead communist. 
But 1984 predicted so much that it's almost terrifying that I was reading it, well, I'm listening to the audiobook to be precise, and I'm just, I'm gobsmacked at how far into this dystopia we're living. The world around us, people feel safe with government control, and I find that really strange. It's good to have a safety net, but I do believe that there is this weird sense of safety and security that makes me uneasy. With everything that's happening in the world, a pointless 20-year war just to hand a country back to a group of terrorists, to being told that you cannot read this book, or you cannot watch this movie, or you cannot enjoy this, or you must be this, or you must think this way. It's all very Orwellian. <laughs> And I find it fascinating and terrifying, all in the same sentence. Have we moved past the point of no return? Is our future the Hunger Games? I mean, the Met Ball thing with... Oh, God, I have seen that stupid dress. But the Met Ball thing, like, it looked like something out of the Hunger Games. All the rich aristocrats in their gaudy, horrible dresses, by the way. Like, who thought those dresses were a good idea? Versus the lowly people in their black dresses and their masks behind. It was very strange to watch and very uncomfortable. Have we moved to this point of the the literal... How can I word this? We've moved into a point where we've stepped into an Orwellian society and there's too many people happy with that. There's too many people that want to give outside forces control of your life. There are too many people that don't want to get off their butts and work. There are too many people who are naive. And it's not their fault. It's not their fault at all. And, and especially with the young ones, it, it's a naivety. It's, it's wishful thinking. The real world doesn't work that way. But have we stepped over into that void? Have we stepped into... The precipice. Have we gone too far? What's next? <laughs>